Okay, so one of the things I wanted to ask you about is your experience now using the Noble Stitch after many cases, not tons, but you've had probably 15 cases, I think, in total, somewhere around there. And uh, I know that you said last time we talked, five years ago, you didn't believe it would work with a suture and you didn't... But I didn't tell you, but... Uh, well, I, was I think you did tell me, actually, but that's what you were thinking. And, and now? Yeah, it has completely changed. I mean, you made a lot of changes in the device itself and also more recently with the technique, so little steps, and I think they really have changed the picture and I think it's not working pretty much straightforward. So uh, I, I, I like it very much and it has from theory so many advantages compared to devices that's maybe really the future to close people's and maybe other defects in that as well. And when you talk about some of the big advantages, I mean, um, I've heard many, I mean, uh, we haven't seen any um, AF at all. Uh, we have, obviously we don't have any erosion stuff, but what do you think are the... Well, I just had a patient on the phone who had developed a thrombus on the device, and uh, I mean, that's not very often, but even if it occurs only in one to two percent of the cases, that's not a good thing to, to see. And all of us have seen patients with erosions, not only in ASDs, but also in PFOs, so uh, then we have the advantage that these patients don't need any, any, any blood thinner therapy after the procedure, no need for aspirin, no need for Plavix. Uh, there is no risk of endocarditis, which is again very rare, but uh, all these are complications which may happen, which I think cannot uh, happen with the suture. And even if the suture fails, and we haven't had a failure over the last 10-15 cases, uh, then even if it fails, then there's still the option to put a device in if needed. And, and that's something that, uh, again, I'm seeing more and more of, and I guess the question is, is, if that were really the case, would it make sense that it was always sort of the first choice in a normal PFO to say, you should try this first, because if it works, it's better, and if it doesn't, you can always revert? Yeah, I mean, that's what I currently believe. We obviously need more data to support that, but I think it should it will most likely become the primary way to close PFOs if there is sufficient tunnel. I mean, we cannot, as you know, we cannot yeah. uh, close those PFOs with a very short tunnel, but most of the PFOs have a tunnel of at least 4 millimeters. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then over time, I'm hoping that, you know, the results and the data will show that, you know, using this technique eliminates the need for having to leave a metal structure, because also allergies are, you're going to want to cross that septum in a lot of these patients later, and that's difficult, maybe not impossible, but certainly difficult when you have an umbrella in place. Is that accurate? Yeah, it's, uh, it's actually doable, we have done this, but I remember a case where we were not able to access the left atrium anymore, even after using just a small PFO device, 25 millimeter, we could not find a spot where we could still puncture. So yes, I think this is also an advantage, and uh, not all of our patients will need uh, left atrium appendage closure automatically, but some will. So I think on the long term, it's an advantage for them as well. Now that you brought up nitroclip, <laughs> so they might need that, but do you see, based on just obviously only the original conversations we've had, potential benefit in doing mitral repairs and other structural repairs if I can give you delivery of suture as you've seen in some of the animal work we've done? Well, I think in general, uh, all procedures we can do with the heart without leaving a device in have these advantages, what we discussed about the PFO, and that's also true for all other procedures as well. When you think specifically about the mitral valve repair, with a mitral clip, we very often have the situation that we place the first clip, we see some reduction in our arm, then we consider a second clip, but then we have to decide, we have to leave the first clip where it is, uh, and then go for the next clip, and the next clip may produce a gradient which is not acceptable, then we have the patient left with just one clip and insufficient result. With a suture-based technique, I can imagine, and we have discussed this, that you can place one suture, don't tie it, then put a second suture, third suture, don't tie them, and then at the end decide which of combination is the best for this patient, maybe just one, maybe two, maybe three, and you can pull on, on the different sutures and find the optimal result before you finally lock it down. Yeah, and I think that's, again, one of the things I want to achieve is giving you that adjustability on a beating heart yeah. so that you can make that determination. One other one we talked about before, and you had the joy of coming and helping us in the animal lab on this one, and 
and, and helping us in the clinical uh, aspects of it was our, our transapical access and closure. And since we spoke last time, we've now done the first two patients very successfully. Um, and we're reducing that down to something that can be used on a regular basis. And again, a few years ago, you mentioned you may not have believed that that was possible, but again, not leaving anything behind. What do you see, as long as there is a future for a transapical access for different things, do you think, again, suture should be maybe the first line on that one? Yeah, maybe it will be. I mean, as long as many surgeons are doing a lot of transapical, then they may feel comfortable with the conventional technique. But I just talked to, to, to surgeons a few days ago, and we discussed, well, what happens if the uh, number of cases they do transapically is going down. They Not all of them feel comfortable anymore to do transapical because they switch to transfemoral. Right. So then any technique which makes is more predictable and less dependent from the operator is an advantage. Well, that's our goal. We'll continue to try to strive for that. And uh, thanks for the cases today. Thanks for the input. I really appreciate it. Thanks for the Always.